Hello, this is an assessment to repair and recondition a Steinway upright piano, 135 centimetres tall, made in 1909. Uh, first of all, to be looking at the casework, which isn't the reason it's come in, but while we're looking at it, we might as well see if there's any improvement. It's a bit dull in places, has been repolished and quite nicely repolished, the top style and the full style, so that's something we could do while the piano was here. So it's pretty integral on the whole. Interestingly, it has chrome coloured pedals. That was quite common, Stein was of that age. And chrome, co chrome colour on upright pianos is often uh, very popular now. In fact, grands as well. So things go full circle. But generally, brass is obviously what you expect pedals to be. A bit cobwebby on the back, but generally in good condition. As an 88 note Steinway, a lot of the older ones, and there are lots of older Steinways in the UK, they're the most common actually, are 85 notes, so um, it's important to know that if you're buying a musician's instrument. 85 keys is okay to do all the exams on, but you might be expecting an 88 note. Well, this one is 88, so um, that's encouraging. And these key tops, you can see they've been come off and replacements have been made very yellow replacements we we have plenty of key tops so we can get the color uh, fortunately get a color match that's much better than that but generally they've been stuck back on well and they've been uh, buffed very well so they're nice and shiny so they don't attract the dirt now the main issue on the piano is that they're, they're very sticky, at the, uh, particularly in the bass. If you press them down, you're just not coming up at all. Um, and we'll have a look at that inside and see what's going on, what's the problem. So the restoration of the piano in some aspects has been done well. Um, the tuning pins are extremely large, so they've obviously been replaced, not the breast plank behind. Um, this is quite common on Steinways, but they're about the largest you could get. So if you wanted to replace them uh, again, you would have to replace the rest plank. Uh, but they're holding and it's quite well in tune, so that's good. Um, the strings are, in, uh, are quite well made as well. And we'll just listen to the tone of it. So if we start in the middle, the most important area. It's got promise, but it's a bit varied. And at the top end, is a bit too mellow really. Whether you could brighten the hammers enough, it would be difficult to, to be sure, but we can certainly try and brighten the tone. Round here is very mellow sounding. Too mellow really. And it's quite pleasant, but it's not bringing out enough power really. In the central area, nice full tone. Bad damping here. That needs sorting out as well. Particularly that one. And here there are notes sticking. And so the problem is, as is as we'll see in a second, as you take a hinge off, you'll see what the problem is. It's the hinges that are too tight. The damper regulation to the pedal, you can see there's one not pulling off at all there. There's one or two others that are pulling off much later as well. Damper regulation to the keys, as we press the keys down, you see those two dampers lifting off, that's B and C. Roughly halfway, which is not too bad, that's B and C being played like that. So it's good to just test the dampers if you've got a piano, just test your dampers like that, see if they're pulling off at the same time. Uh, those are a bit later, that's not a bad thing, these ones at the break point need to be a bit, a bit later because the dampers are a bit short. Altogether there are quite a lot of hinges that are tight. Uh, you can see there the top one, there's some is marked with blues, some of them, um, which is useful. But if we push the pedal down and lift the dampers off, we're going to find more stickiness. And always test stickiness with the dampers off, obviously, because that's when it's more likely to stick. And the bass here as well, pretty unplayable because they're so sticky. It's checking under the keys for moth damage, moth larvae damage. It's so common, even with pianos being restored, even modern pianos these days. We've been talking a lot about it recently because we've had so much problem with it, but this looks like it has a clean bill of health. Before taking the action out on this age of time, where you obviously have to undo these bolts, but there's also the half blow uh, lift rod is here, and that needs taking out because you can't get the action out without doing that. So that's attached to the rod at the bottom. Sometimes there's something to hold it in here. On this one there isn't, so you just pull it out. Interestingly enough, the date of this piano is on the, on the frame here, so 26109. 
Now, Steinwoods of this age, up to about 1920s, um, have a H flange. That means the damper and the hammer are joined together. These don't have dampers because they're higher notes. So I've taken the bottom hammer off to see why it's tight. Um, and we can see, there's the damper, by the way. So you have to take this off first and then take the hammer off. And it has these extra springs, so it's a bit awkward to get out. Um, but if we just lift the hammer up here, and um, this should... The, the hinge should almost swing on its own, but if we look at it here, we'll see that letting go of the hammer only just goes down. So it takes the whole weight of the hammer and the butt to get the hinge to go down. This is so tight. And if we look at the center of it, I don't know if you can see on the video, but it's green. It's got verdigris on it. Someone's obviously put liquids on WD-40 and so on. And on that side, it's more obvious. Um, and if you can see, I'm not focusing that brilliantly. So hopefully you can see that. But um, that's the cause of the problem. So the centre pin needs replacing and we need to clean this out as well. It's, it's a common problem that actually, unfortunately. And Simon's being very sensitive, uh, they'll easily stick. To compare that, this is a, a higher note that's not sticking at all. And if I let go of the hammer and the butt, it goes straight down. So, and this almost moves on its own. So that's just as it should be. So there's the H flange in place, as they call in the trade an H flange because of the shape of it, um, and that without the damper. So you can see it's it's a lot more fiddly than most actions, and and also there's an extra spring here that needs locating. It'll be good to check all these uh, damper hinges too while the action's out, and also the the hammer butt hinges here, the whipping hinges because some of those might be too tight as well they don't seem too tight compared to the hammers the hammers were the main problem so the main work to do on the piano is uh, to check repin the hammers that uh, really need repinning and check all the hinges while it's here really we can improve the case while it's here as well try and uh, make it look a little bit more integral and improve damping definitely there's several dampers that aren't working very well and then we'll just check it and see if there's anything else. I did notice that the up weight is very low on some certain keys here. That's 17 gra um, grams up weight. It should be 20 plus. Steinway's particularly very fussy and they, they need to return nicely. 54 down weight here on this note 41. And a, an up weight of 16 grams, which is far too low really. I would like to see those all at 20 grams or above. So most of them are around about 20 grams. We talked about this recently actually on the Steinway that we have in stock. So it's very important to check the up weight. If it's too low, then we need to try and increase it. So that's an assessment of a Steinway upright piano made in 1909. Um, very well made piano, obviously it's a Steinway and they are extremely well made but quite fussily made and tend to take more time than working on an average piano, say like a Beckstein which is much simpler or even a Grotchen Steinweg. So I hope that's been helpful and if you're interested in having piano assessed, you've got a problem that you don't know what it is and by all means contact us, info at robertspianos.com and we'll see if we can help.